What's going on guys and girls, welcome back to another Rome Total War video. Today we're gonna be taking on the historical battles within the game. And we're gonna go through them chronologically. Of course, we're not gonna take on every single battle within this particular video because... Well... This will be one long video. And I don't want to bore you to death. But this will be the start of a pretty interesting series on the channel. So we're gonna kick this off chronologically as I said. We're gonna start from the oldest battle in time and we're gonna move forward in order of occurrence. So first is the Battle of Ascalon, which took place in 279 BC. Pyrrhus, the king of Epirus, had a long career as a soldier, pretty much from the age of 12. He was related to Alexander the Great through his mother and was drawn into the wars of the successors after Alexander's death. In the process, he managed to get himself deposed and reinstated as King of Epirus and proclaimed King of Macedonia, and then promptly dethroned in Macedonia. Pyrrhus consciously modeled himself on Alexander and even claimed that Alexander talked to him in dreams. Even after losing the Macedonian throne, he kept looking for something to conquer, like his hero. It was at this point that the ambassadors of Tarentum arrived to ask for help against some Western barbarians who called themselves Romans. Pyrrhus needed little further encouragement and in 280 BC landed in Italy. His first overtures to the Romans offering mediation between them and the citizens of Tarentum were rejected. His victory at Heraclea was not enough to win the war, however, even when he marched on Rome. Incidentally, his opponent at Heraclea, Appius Claudius, was responsible for giving the Roman army its first taste of new punishment, decimation. Pyrrhus had hoped to win over Rome's allies and client cities to his banner, but every one of them shut the gates against him, and he was forced to winter in Campania, even though he had been close enough to Rome to see the smoke of the city on the horizon. In 279, Pyrrhus advanced again. This time, he moved up the Adriatic coast, methodically reducing the Roman colonies there. Perhaps he hoped that the locals would rise and follow him, but the Romans moved too, and sent an army to confront him under the commandment of Publius Sulficius Soberio and Publius Dicius Mus. The two armies confronted each other near the river Alphidus, upstream from the spot where the equally bloody battle of Cana will be fought 63 years later. Asculum was to give the world the concept of a Pyrrhic victory. A victory won at a so great a cost that it was almost a defeat. As Pyrrhus himself remarked, if we are victorious in one more battle with the Romans, we shall be utterly ruined. So we will be playing as the SPQR against the army of Epirus, in this case represented by the Seleucid Empire. Unfortunately, Epirus is not a faction within the original Rome Total War, so that change was kind of expected. From the army composition, I can see that we're gonna have to face off elephants, phalanxes, a decent contingent of skirmishers and cavalry. Not gonna lie guys, this will be a rough start to the series. In this battle we'll most probably learn the true meaning of a period victory, if we manage to snatch victory at all. So have your fingers crossed, because I'm gonna probably need every last piece of luck that I can get. It is the early 3rd century BC, and the military prestige of the Greek successors has reached its zenith in the person of King Paris of Epirus. The fledgling state of Rome is trying to secure her supremacy on Italian soil. The two cultures are about to clash at Ascalum in southeast Italy. 
After a day of inconclusive fighting in the forests and hills, Pyrrhus maneuvers the Romans into a head-on battle where his forces must win the day. Elephants and phalanxes against the legions of Rome. Can the Romans hold the field against the best Greece has to offer, or will they crumble and flee? Well, if you look at it from a historical point of view, the Romans did lose this one. But we're gonna make sure that history does not repeat itself. Also guys, do let me know in the comments below if you want me to voice over the story before um, each battle. Or do you want me to leave it to you to read it yourselves? Alright, so I've decided on the following strategy for this engagement. We're gonna form in the checkerboard formation. And we're gonna place some of the triarii that we have on the right flank, because I know that the enemy has a decent amount of cavalry, including their general, so we do want to keep them in check. Of course, we're gonna place the skirmishers, on the other hand, on the left flank, which is pretty unusual for me, I know, but I do want them to deal with those elephants, because that is a menace. Do remember this, nothing beats elephants better than a few well-thrown spears to the face. And of course, I do want my general in the back because if he dies, most probably my whole army will rout. The leftover triarii are probably gonna get in the back as well to be like a reserve when we need them. Would you make it, please, a little bit faster over here? Come on, we can do it. Thank you. Alright. Let's see what the enemy is doing. Looks like they're forming. Which is cool. Alright. We do want to be facing them constantly, head on. So, we're gonna make a few adjustments ourselves. Let's see, uh, no, I don't need to grab everybody. Let's grab every individual group and simply move them a bit forward. Yeah, that will do. And I do want my Brinko Pays to be in the front, not in the back, because those, those spikes are gonna melt my Hestati. I want the skirmishers a bit closer to the enemy as well. A bit to the front. Yeah, a little bit closer. Because they do have that skirmish mode enabled, so if something is to chase them, like for example the elephants, they should be able to outrun them. I hope. We'll see. Hmm. Now I've started to think that maybe we should combine the Princopes and the Hestati because we don't actually need two separate groups for those. Yeah, I might just do that. But first, let's see what the enemy is doing. 
Hmm. Okay, so for the from the looks of it, they're actually forming their battle line, and I managed to predict that their cavalry is gonna come on, on our right side, which is pretty good. We're prepared for that. Okay, let me combine those two because I'm gonna forget. Here we go. Yeah, and the good thing about that, about our merge, is that now we can move the whole line without having to worry about every individual group. So this is pretty cool. Um, I do want the reserve to be out of out of a group because I'm probably gonna need to move them separately. I need you a little further back, so. Over here should be good. It's a little too early for the skirmishers to play their part. So I'm gonna wait a little bit for the enemy to advance. And after that, I'm gonna unleash the skirmishers upon the... Uh, upon the elephants. Okay, now is a good time to act. Come on, guys. Engage those beasts. We're getting shot down from them. Uh, it turns out that the elephants have uh, archers up on them. And they're doing a little bit of damning, damage. They're chipping away my forces, so... I'm really not a fan of that. Here we go. And that's one down. Alright. That's two down. Run! <laughs> Run, boys! Oh, crap. That's the cavalry. Okay. That's actually the general. Alright. Uh, and the other cavalry is moving in. Okay. We do need to engage this. Come on, guys. Come on. The Equites, you need to engage as well. We don't want to get flanked. Oh crap, that cavalry is just chasing down my... Shoot him down! They're chasing down my skirmishers, which is not good because... They're gonna run them over. And I do want to get my Ecutes out of here because... They don't need to be in that melee. We already have spearmen engaged with that cavalry, so... Come on, break off! Please! And it looks like the phalanxes are starting to attack our line. Uh, because of the gaps, I'll be able to maneuver a bit of the units that I have. Uh, oh, come on, chase them, chase them, please. Don't let them get away. Uh, yeah, my, my skirmishers are toast. Come on, guys, you can do it. Bring them down. Alright, so uh, because of the gaps that I have in the line, I can pretty much move every unit. And the formation is a little bit more flexible. I mean, it's not ideal for all situations, but... In this particular one, where we're fighting slow and pretty rigid phalanxes, we'll be able to outmaneuver them that way. So this is a pretty big plus. It's actually a Roman strategy if you... Uh, you're not familiar with that. So let's see it in action. So we're gonna try to uh, surround them. And probably hit them a lot from the back and side. Because the phalanx is pretty strong in the front, but not in the back or sides. And they turn pretty slowly. So you can disrupt the whole formation pretty easily. Of course, everything that comes from the front is, uh, sadly, on a suicidal mission. So you do need to be careful. Well, if you can hold them in place, they become a pretty easy target. I targeted some of their skirmishers with my general. Hopefully he'll be able to 
fend off for himself for a little while. We've managed to beat their cavalry on the right flank, so we're gonna move in the, the Triarii that are now free to assist. Yeah, he's doing all right. Get him, boy! Oh, that was expected. My whole skirmish force is now routing, except for that unit, but probably is gonna route as well. I... Uh, well... You did your part, man, so... Yeah, we've got the, the phalanxes engaged, we have their mercenaries engaged. We're gonna move in with the general and start hitting them from the back. And we're gonna move to normal speed. Should be alright. Okay, you're moving out of there, buddy. Come on. Get in here. Ooh, there's two fla phalanxes. Let me try to hit those. Here goes nothing. Come on. Yeah, we've managed to make, make one of them out. Unfortunately, the other one has turned and is now eating away our cavalry, so... Ooh. Let's see, we're gonna leave those, we're not gonna chase the, the routing units. We're gonna continue smashing into uh, the backs of our enemies for as long as possible. Oh, come on, don't die, don't die. I need, I need you, General, don't die. Uh... Yeah, we're, we're making good progress. Some of our units are routing, routing as well, but we're gonna make it. I have faith in my men. We can make it. And you to smash in here. You to help here. Actually, I... Oh, oh ooh, ooh. Three units. All right. I should probably refrain from using my general that much. Don't I have... Yeah. I do have the Ecutes still ready and waiting in the woods. It's now your time to shine, boys. Come on. Let's see if they managed to route that unit over there. That they, yeah, they did. Good job, good job. All right. This is not looking bad. It's not looking great either, but it's not looking bad. Uh. Oh, come on. Can you please come in here and hit this phalanx from the back? Come on, guys! Yeah, here we go. Cut them down. Woo. Oh, watch out for the new one. You engage here. Hit him from the back. Yeah, good job. Come on, route. Okay. Now, if I can only... No! I don't need my general to die. Oh, crap. Let's see. Uh, I want my prink base to engage with these. I want my general to stay alive. For at least for as long as possible. I should be able to fit my cavalry within this gap. Oh, yeah, I can. All right. You hit this, you come here for assist. It should be good. Oh, my Prinkupes did a good job routing that unit. That sneaky unit. I should probably pull back the cavalry from here. Yeah, that would be that would be a good idea. Come on, go, go. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Or that. Oh come on. Come here. Go over here. Oh! No, no, wait, wait, wait. Attack their general. That's their general over here. Come on, if we manage to bring them down, if we manage to bring him down, they're gonna start routing so much easier. Oh, goddamn. Come on. Good job. All right. So, let's see what we have left. Three units, four units, and a general. Not a lot. And we have a lot of archer fire coming in. Let's see how you like these apples. 
Cut them down, boys. Oh, come on, attack. Don't just sit there. You can do it. Got them. Because they do have a lot of phalanx right behind you. Oh, these print face coming here. Come on, reform. Okay, so my Ecutes are definitely gonna go down if they don't route. Even though they're fighting archers, those archers should be pretty well equipped to handle my... And they route. Oh, okay. Oh well. We can manage without them. I hope. <laughs> Come on guys, it's the final push! And we made another unit route. Nice, awesome. Okay. It's time to reform a little. Because I have units all over the map. Come on. You chase these guys, make sure they don't come back. And you guys just hit, hit these. Yeah. Made these route as well. And the archers are still shooting us down. I definitely need to deal with them. To be honest guys, I'm still surprised that I'm able to hold as much units as I have right now without them routing. Because damn this is hard. I'm not really sure that my prink face can do the job. I mean, they looks like they have... Um, yeah, they do have another phalanx over here. Oh, come on, Prick Face, you can do it! Hmm. Maybe I should go in with all of my troops, you know. Oh, this is risky, come on! Just make the archers route. I only need that. I can deal with the phalanx. Alright, let's see. You two are gonna deal with it. The Princopes are gonna hold because they have a little bit more armor and experience and they're not gonna simply break off and route. And speaking of that, my other Princopes have routed. Ah, come on! Okay, let's see. I'm gonna hold you. I'm gonna flank you and hit you in the back with these guys. And I'm gonna try to scare off the archers with my two cavalry. One of which is my general, and I really hope that this lucky son of a gun doesn't die. Alright, for now you're doing a pretty good job. I want you to curse at them from afar. <laughs> Just stay where you are, you're not getting targeted by the archers, so you're fine. Stay alive! Goddamn. Let's see. We managed to, to route the phalanx, so now we're gonna hit the archers, which are in skirmish mode. Why do I have to do this? Alright, this will be really risky. I'm gonna have to pin them down with my general. Even though that's only two units, it should be enough to keep them occupied until my other troops arrive and engage them in melee. I know this is crazy, but it can work. I'm doing it for the views. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Get him, boy! Whew, my hands are starting to sweat. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Come on. Yeah, just, just keep them occupied. Come on. Don't you dare turn around and shoot me in the back! Get him! Yes! Yes! Charge! The enemy army is in flight! Pursue them and drive them from the battlefield! Oh, I'm definitely pursuing these guys! I'm cutting them down to the last man! Six and a 
a half hours later. Damn, just look at that carnage. That devastation. Wow, I've lost so many good men. Still, we've managed to come on top just slightly. If those archers turned... Oh god damn, if my general died. But yeah, we did it guys. We did it. Wow. Your victory could not have been in more doubt. And yet the gods finally smiled on your efforts. Roma Invicta. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. I know I'm getting a little bit cringy. Sometimes. But I know you guys like the cringe. So, it's for you. <laughs> this was the true meaning of a Pyrrhic victory. Right here in this battle. Peace out. <laughs>